Good morning everybody from Medellin. So we are just gonna leave our accommodation now and then we are heading to our new accommodation for the next two nights. But we are doing two tours this morning. So the first one is La Camina 13 and then the second one is the Pablo Escobar tour. So these are like the two most famous tours to do here in Medellin. So the private guide is picking us up at half nine. So we're just leaving now and we have to be at our accommodation for nine and then he's picking up us half nine. And then we're ready to go. So we can't, we're looking forward to it and we can't wait to go. He was trying to to get Pablo and to send him to prison. Yeah, yeah. And Pablo wanted to be the president of Colombia. Colombia, that was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember, yeah. but this guy was the responsible of of um, expelling out Pablo of the okay. Congress. And uh, after Pablo uh, left the Congress, he, he realized that he would never be the president of Colombia. Okay. So that's why the the dark side of Pablo started. Started to come up in 1984. Ah. So everything that happened to Pablo was because of this, that. this guy. Yeah. All right. So every everyone here is uh, related to something that's died. That Pablo killed Jeez. after they. No, this is a sentence that they said, but obviously they said more than. Say what's that? Yeah. More than that, but um, yeah, they, uh, we have we have news newspaper. Uh, Directors of newspapers or, okay. or in the media, people in the media, yeah. the governor of Antioquia, actually. And yep, so all of them wanted to, to okay. say to the world that Pablo was trafficking drugs, but Pablo was in Colombia and yeah, yeah. he could walk free, but they wanted to show to the world out. that he was walking free. Like. So, so, yeah, in this. The last, the last sentence, I mean, for, for the part. Yeah. He says, despite the fear of those years between bombs and guns, or yeah, guns, we continue finding us, living and dreaming. We kept alive the hope in the future. Okay. And that's why Medellin is now growing. Growing away. Thanks. Uh, Everything yeah, is because stopped. Because of, of the hope we had. One death. Oh wow. So we have 46,000 deaths in nine years. Jesus, Jesus Christ. In nine years. So it's a lot, isn't it? It's full of deaths. Yeah, it started in 1984. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, that, that is the dark. That's the dark side to it. But it was after he died. And so in 1984, 88, we find the, the car bombs in Medellin. We started to have car bombs in Medellin in in the newspaper, newspaper, in buildings. Yeah, in a lot of, of places in Colombia. See now, why like, innocent people would have got caught up, especially with the car bombs? Yes, a lot. Actually, you can find here 18. April 18, 1, 2, 3, 4, Jesus. 5, and 6, and same with May 25, 6. Why is that? What car is it? He's put car bombs. Car bombs. Pablo? Yeah. yeah Pablo good. In the same city, the same day, different crazy, parts of the city. Yeah, it's, it was crazy. It's like a war zone. Yeah, because people that was living in that age, you, you don't have... Um, 
cell phones or social media. Uh, so you know where where it was going to happen. Where it's going to, when or okay. where are you okay? So My family is okay. You just see the oh you, you just you hear the sound. Just hear the bang. Or hear the sound of the explosion and Jesus. oh here we go again. <laughs> Here, the pharmacy, La Rebaja Pharmacy, oh, wow. was a war, a war between Pablo and the owners of the pharmacy. Oh, really? Because yeah. They were the owners of Cali Cartel. Okay. So uh, the pharmacy was the way they used to clean or laundry. Yeah, yeah. That That's was why bomb. Pablo, yeah, Pablo destroyed those, those pharmacies. So we got more here. Here, here, realize how many went off in the same day oh yeah we got oh here in 1989 is the darkest That's year the for fire bombs we have seven <gasps> the same year and, and you just don't see this like you just see it like the series and that's it like you don't actually see like yeah but in the city, like the series not they don't show ah so you don't see like 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 the real or oh, real thing that's really happened like really happen, yeah. and here in a, a police vehicle or in the middle of the street in a public street so you you were not safe no we weren't safe to walk the streets at all yeah you would know where a bomb would go off uh, Jeez, there was a lot. Wow. i didn't know that in here, uh, August 27th, we got seven. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Jesus. Oh, your birthday. My birthday, 27th August. <laughs> oh. When you're born. <laughs> August 29th? Uh. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got three. Three, four. Uh, three, four, five. Five. Five, oh, five bones in your When you were born in 1989? Yeah, 29th of August, 89. Ah, 89, wow. Okay. The no, same this is where you were. Ah. Uh, getting born. Crazy what was going on in the world. So, yes. And... Yeah, we got banks, a lot of banks. State banks, stupid banks. Why was the banks? Was that to do with the government or...? Yes, we, the, they were the owners of the, ah, the okay. banks, the, the government. So that was another so way they had get to... Get to the government. Yeah, Money, so money, here, mm -hmm. We got the airplane. An airplane? Yeah, he wanted to kill one person and that person didn't go inside the airplane. So other people died? All the people, 170 people died. Jesus. Yeah, the target was outside. Jesus. Hilton as well. 1990. Okay, no, 1991. <coughs> yeah. How did he manage to do all that? Like, without how, nobody how stopping him? Well, he died? No. no. How did he manage to like do all this without being stopped? Like, how was he? Oh, because stopped? he was he was hidden in uh, outside the country. As he was always hidden. In the in the jungle, so no one could. I mean, he had a satellite cell phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Everything. So it was impossible for the for the government to find him. To find him. Yeah, it was mostly for the for the season or, or the age. Yeah. Because for now, if you have a cell yeah. phone, everything can see. You can find so location yeah. wise. Back then, it was different. Yeah, in the past, in the past, it was very different. And uh, in 1991, Pablo went to the, to the jail. Ah, yeah. So he called the he called the president. And he said he wanted to 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 surrender or to they want to, zone to give up. But he had his own more things to it. Yeah. <laughs> So he said, okay, I got my own secure, uh, maximum security yeah. control. They accepted. In 1991 was the darkest year for, for murders in Medellin. Okay. More than 6,000 people died in Medellin, only in Medellin. Really? While he was in the, in the that, jail. In the jail, in prison. Was that his own jail then? Or was it government? The jail that he was in? Was that his own prison? Yeah, he was. That was his own money done? Oh, so he was like a pawn. <laughs> So was in his own hotel. Yeah, place. it was a, a house, maybe a resting house. So he could do everything he wanted. He had helicopter, he had uh, uh, soccer players 
friends. He played soccer with friends in there. It doesn't feel like prison at all. <laughs> no. <please. laughs> and yeah, was the darkest. Yeah, but you can see that the car bombs stopped That's a bit. And then 1992 and 93, Paulus um, was in prison for one one year, for okay. ten months, from uh, June 19, 1991 to July 1992, right. because he escaped. Ah yes. He and he died in 1993. Finally. And when he died, all the cartels uh, stopped. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Is that due to the fact that he died or yeah, the did he just leave? The day that when he died, the, the history changed. Was that true because the government were kind of closing in on the cartels? or? I think so, but uh, we, we don't, don't really know. know. No one's going to know. Yeah, we don't, we don't really know exactly. But and anybody tried to take his place now? Like no. son or anything? No, because they, they realized that he was the owner of the whole city. And when he died, the small neighborhoods started to have its own ah, like, okay. like owners. So it was all kind of so broken up. Then a couple more more neighborhoods started to, to work together. Ah, okay. So they were growing and growing. And, and yeah, but like Pablo, like the owner of everything, Crazy how he owned, like, with so much it. power. Yes, a lot of power. And that, another statue was created for the police, the one, yeah. that were killed. Paolo killed more than uh, 3,000 police. He paid $1,000 for every police you killed. Really? Yeah, really. A regular person can set a, a proof that you kill a police and you receive money. Oh, yeah? to show the history and the violence and especially the people that died over the year to violence. So yeah, it was interesting to see. You don't really see that. And that's like the real truth of it as well. So I was interested to see. And it's sad also to see that many people have died over the years of violence. And then Andreas, our tour guide, is just there as well. It's Andreas. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> So yeah, now we're going to Pablo Escobar's grave and there is family members there also in the grave. So we're going now. And yeah. Yeah, wait. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
quello del pilota gringo che ti a Paolo che è una foto del Nicaragua si è contrattato al narcotraffico mm. mm. e So guys, we just arrived at the Pablo Escobar Museum and it's where the neighborhood where Pablo donated houses to the homeless and then brought them here. So I'm just going to show you. So these first bottom house was the ones that he built and then obviously people built houses over the years. And yeah, this was the Pablo Escobar team as you'd say. So yeah, it's been interesting to know a few things about him. And now we are going to the place where he was shot also. So we're just getting into the taxi now and we're going. And if you came to the Yeah, yeah. This is a different like. So guys, we're in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods back in Medellin in the late 80s. And now it's changed. So it's just their care for the tourists now and it's like a vibrant place. It's all colourful graffiti, shops, lovely food, drinks and yeah, it's a really cool place to come. So we're going to keep going, we're going to grab some local food here now and then check around the area and yeah, it's good, we're uh, really enjoying ourselves here. It's busy but I don't think it's meant to be as busy as it should be, but we're just going to show you around as well. So here we go. So guys, we just got two ice creams and it's a local one here. It's uh, mango. mango and lemon. So it's like a popular one here to do. But yeah, it'll cool you down because it's very hot outside. Salt as well. And there is salt included as well. So yeah, it's different. It's nice though. lifts inside of unit 13 because it's just that high up and we'll show you now it's crazy and then we just keep going up and up and up so yeah it's unusual to have lifts inside kind of a small town our tour guide just said that six of this
Tour Tour Guide said that just up here, you can see 85% of Medellin. So yeah, just shows how big it is as well. We're gonna see a nice view up there. So guys, our time here in Medellin is over and we really had an amazing time, didn't we? Yeah, it was really nice. Really enjoyable. Apart from the time that we have to get everything sorted because of what happened in Cuba, but it was but, really nice. Well, we managed to get everything sorted. Yeah. So yeah, we've done two tours while we were here. We've done the Community 13 and we've done the Pablo Escobar one. So the Community 13. We found it a bit, we, don't, we didn't find it as good as we thought it I would. I thought it would be something different. It was very busy, like loads of tourists, and then you can just go around. You cannot like go in the middle of the community churching. It's like one way, the whole way up and then the whole way back down. Yeah. So yeah, it was very crowded as well, very crowded. And then so. we didn't need the tour guide as well. <laughs> no, we didn't need a tour guide. You can just get a taxi or whatever to your start and then go up yourself. So yeah, the next one was Pablo Escobar and that one was interesting for me because i have watched a lot of narcos and stuff yeah. agatha hasn't no no interest at all <laughs> but yeah it was good to learn the history about there was a lot of violence to it that doesn't show really on netflix and all that and yeah i found it really interesting it's another thing you could do yourself yeah. a lot of the sites are like in the city center so yeah. you don't need tour guide like public you can go yourself yeah so they're, they're all public so you don't have to do them yourself so yeah guys, this is the end of our tour here in Medellin. And we are going to Guatapé. <laughs> so we're finally going to Guatapé, so a bit of countryside as well. So guys, we hope you liked this video. Like and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> and we'll see you soon.